So today I'm with Josh Vegan and um, I'm going to quiz him about all the coaching um, and activities that he does uh, and produces in the digital world. So thank you, Josh, for joining me today. Hi, awesome to be with you today. Thanks so much. I feel very honoured um, because I follow your um, activities and as a marketer and digital person, I feel like you are really raising it, you know, raising the bar, not just for um, coaches, but for um, all of us in the industry and on producing a really slick brand and, you know, you're all in, clearly mm -hmm. you're all in yeah. on your marketing and activities. So that's what we, we're going to talk about today, not your coaching, sure. not your sales, because yeah. um, this is the digital marketing show. So we're going to talk about um, all things digital. Sure, go for it. So what's your favourite social media platform and why? Oh, so I think that like as you evolve, you kind of uh, develop a, a platform uh, that you naturally have an affinity with because it, it gets you a benefit by being there. And you know, it's really interesting about like what you favor versus what your audience favors. So for example, when we do work in London, it's very much about Twitter. Uh, when we come to the commercial sector, like commercial industrial and retail, very much about LinkedIn. Uh, when we tend to operate with some of more of our older clientele, very much Facebook. Uh, when we're talking to the next generation down, we're talking a lot about Instagram. And then, no, not so much, but things like, you know, TikTok and Snapchat kind of then sit there. So I guess like kind of with my generation, we were on the edge of Facebook, but really um, Instagram, because I'm much more motivated, I guess, by imagery and motivated by video content um, than I am about language and what people are kind of saying or that. And so it's kind of an interesting exploration about what you do is it's one of my discovery tools to discover new people, new products, new brands, new things. And how often do you review your strategy, your online strategy for attracting business to you? Oh, so it's a, it's a really interesting thing. You know, you, you've got to understand about um, what actually are you trying to achieve? You know, because the end goal of what we're doing with people is about, um, is about engaging with the existing customer base. And so what I always say to people is that what do you have more of? Do you have more new customers or more existing? And usually, if people have been in business for a little while, they'll say, oh, I have more existing customers. I'm like, okay, great, so what are you doing around them? So you're spending all this money to go and attract new, but you're doing nothing to work with your existing customer base. Mm -hmm. And if you have a basic methodology and philosophy that one customer served well leads you to your next customer, then your job is that how do you serve those people? And so I think that people get quite confused when they hear the words like digital and social and actually understanding what that is. And so um, where does email sit? Where does your social platform sit? Where does live chat sit? You know, like in all of those things, and where do you actually need to be? Like, where do you actually want to play? And I think that like social media, media means what? It's a media company. Media companies are what pay to play. If you don't want to pay, then you can't play, right? And so this is the whole conversation around understanding that. Email is a much more effective tool because the benefit of that is a huge open rates. So if I look on social media, I'll see 10%. So 10% of my audience will actually engage and interact. If I go over to email, I'm at 35. So I'm at three and a half times the, the, the multiple in terms of engagement. Mm -hmm. So what am I going to try and do? Well, every single customer that I work with, they have to have an email address to get a social account. So you can either be in the pay-to-play space or you can be in the space of the people that you already know. So a lot of people think, oh, I don't need to do email. We'll do it well. So I ask people, well, how many subscribes do you get? How many unsubscribes do you get? Do you call your unsubscribes? Do you find out why they're unsubscribed? Usually those unsubscribe moments are the best moments because they're actually telling you that the content wasn't on, on par or we've actually just done a transaction. So if they've just done a transaction, then from that point of view, okay, great. Well, what does that now mean for us into the future? Can we do a future transaction? Is there an immediate transaction, particularly if you're a real estate agent? So. Yeah. So that's interesting. Your stats are very high for email, by the way. And yeah. that's interesting because I'm um, assuming it's aligned to your attention um, oh, ma massive side of it, it as well because you're retaining people. So you do daily email. Sure. Um, uh, does that work for you? How does that so, work? So look, I think that like um, you learn a lot and um, I think that like this whole conversation is provide value first and invoice second. And like I'm going to say, that's not for everyone. Like I'm going to say, we are uh, massive about producing you know, really valuable insights that actually help people to produce um, incredible incomes. You know, so in order to go and do that, you gotta start thinking about well, how do I become valuable to my customer? And the, the easiest way to understand it is to get very, very clear about what customer problems are. And so, you know, in terms of building, an, building a database or are you building an audience? So if we were in an amphitheater and you had an audience of people and you were putting on a show and uh, lots of people were coming in, but they were immediately leaving, what would you do? 
you would change the show up, right? You would do something different. Well, that's what's actually happening in terms of the email world. This is about understanding that. And, you know, um, it's all about how about the acquisition of that data or information is that every single person that's on that email has either seen me speak or has been referred to me. So it's 100% permission based. You know, obviously Seth Godin would talk a lot about that. But it's also people that are naturally very interested in what it is that you have to say. So where's the value proposition of what you bring to the table? And what do you do in your in your emails? We write one to one. Yeah, always and have. So how do you, um, who, who, how do you visualise who you're talking to? Yeah. So one of the early things that happens in a business is, is um, hopefully the development of a customer avatar. So with the customer avatar, what are the likes, preferences, you know, brand brand things, whatever that that particular person would go through, and you write to that person. So um, inside of any business, you need to be really clear about what does the end customer actually look like, and what are the problems that those customers go through. Now, the way that that becomes really good in digital is that you speak to more of your customers. So I speak to a minimum of 30 of my customers every single business day over the phone. The benefit of that is that then when I go to write something, I actually write based off the problems of what my customers have got. And so if you think about it from that perspective, you've got to get a much better solution in the way that you go to write content. And traditionally, people don't do that, whether or not it's in a digital or in an offline environment. They just don't do that stuff. You know, hey, I'm going to be in your street today. Well, OK, good. But how what does that do to me and how does it relate to my situation? So if you're going to become really good in, in the digital marketing space, you know, my belief is, is that you, know, you don't have to follow what other people do. You find the thing that's going to ramp up substantial value and you do that really well and you move the free line and then the customer is in a position that then they can engage your services when they are ready to buy. Yeah. And you know, it, it's interesting, I think, that digital moves quite quickly um, in that I now find that I join brands or services online um, during the period that I'm thinking about purchase, once I've purchased, I unfollow. So that's a new world too. Yeah, and there's a lot of marketers out there that need to get smart on the fact that if somebody's been through their shopping cart or has become a customer, that they need to take them out of their audiences on Facebook so that they're, they're not being retargeted for yeah. something that they've already just purchased. And the Google Ads well. network and all of that sort of yeah. stuff, right? It's like, yeah. it's, it's not, like, you know, people just don't think about a much more integrated approach. They think in one-off transactions. So it just happened on email and on our web store, but it didn't do, why do we have to impact that on what actually happens on our Facebook audience or any of those things? So, yeah. you know, that's a, that's a big conversation. So yeah, I've really enjoyed our conversation today that I could, you know, pick your brain and talk to you about business and digital, you know, till the cows come home. But um, I've taken up a lot of your time. So thank you for letting Amazing. me into your world. Thank and you. I'll talk to you again. No problems.